A dot-sized gland in the brain triggers release of our natural sleeping pill. Melatonin. Acting on our central nervous system, melatonin makes us drowsy. But as the body slows, the brain goes to work. Every night, it performs a tune-up. Brain cells that have worked all day shut down for repair. Chemicals clean up the byproducts of brain cell activity. And in some parts, new brain cells grow. Without this internal diagnostic and repair service, the brain couldn't maintain peak performance. If we stay awake too long, our brain knocks us out, no matter what the consequences. That's what happened to explorer David Hempelman Adams when he attempted a record-breaking solo balloon trip to the North Pole. David planned to sleep briefly at times during the 1,500-mile journey. But he didn't stick to his schedule. In the first couple of days, I was on top of the game. And, you know, the adrenaline was up. Um, you know, I'm not too bad for the first couple of days anyway. After 48 hours without sleep, the balloonist's thought center was the first to go. Going into the second, into the third day, I was making silly mistakes. Okay, that's the new track. When I would call up the control room, they would give me a track and I'd repeat it three or four times just to make sure. And they go, no, 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 what are you stupid? And it's this. And so I, I, you realize your performance is going. David has now gone 72 hours without letting sleep perform its critical repair. Sensing a crisis, the brain begins damage control. It shuts down areas not key to vital body function, including the thought center, the seat of logic. David soon starts imagining things. When you get very, very tired, you know, you, you tend to talk to yourself. The worst thing about tiredness is disorientation. Disorientation. I had a little rubber duck and you start talking to the duck. No, you just do start talking to anything. Say hi. Hey. 88 hours in, and still David remains awake. To avoid permanent harm, his brain pulls the plug, and David is out. Now, in the extreme, when you haven't had enough sleep, your brain will shut you down, whatever the circumstance. Even in a life-threatening circumstance, if, you're sleep, if your brain needs sleep so much, it'll shut you down. The balloon starts losing altitude. Even though he's asleep, David is not without defenses. As we sleep, the part of the brain that hears remains alert which is why alarm clocks and other noises wake us. When we fall asleep, we're actually still vigilant and alert to the outside world. So your brain is still on, and you know what's going on outside. When the balloon dips below 9,000 feet, the autopilot screams out a warning. David's emergency response center jolts him. His groggy impulse is to try to flee the scary noise. By climbing from the basket, in the wild, this survival instinct could save your life. But thousands of feet up, it almost brings disaster. After that split second that you realize where you were, seeing the clouds down below, getting in back into the basket, and I remember just shaking and my knees were just knocking. That was the closest I've ever come to killing myself. David's brief but deep sleep was enough to get him back on track. He 
he was able to complete his record flight. You realize now you just need your sleep. And if you don't sleep, you're going to die. And not die because you haven't slept, but die because you made a mistake, which will cause an accident. And um, that's what I learned from that trip. Sleep means more than vital brain cell maintenance. It also lets the brain treat us to spellbindingly original shows. Our minds are screens for dreams. No one can know for sure why we have these mystifying nightly visions. Some say dreams let us unlock the brain's awesome potential. Our brains may buzz while we're awake, but there's a time while we sleep when they get even busier. It's when our body is perfectly still, when practically every area of our brain comes alive. That's when we dream. But there's only one part that virtually shuts down. Our logic center. Unrestricted by reason. Our dreaming brain can wander infinite and fantastic worlds that it creates. It's a human potential to have dreams which are like a virtual world in which we can simulate any imaginable experience. Behind closed lids, our eyes flicker wildly in time to our dreams. Hence the term rapid eye movement or REM sleep. During REM sleep, our brain grows so busy that blood flow to it nearly doubles. So that we can't act out our dreams, our brain sends signals to the spinal cord, temporarily paralyzing our limbs. It may feel as if we dream all night, but we dream in bursts, a few minutes at a time. Yet in a lifetime, we'll spend six years dreaming. Dreams do more than entertain our brain. They are part of the job of storing memories. Only at rest can the brain sift the day's experiences, discarding useless details. Some people believe REM sleep, that it's almost like a filing system, that your brain is going through these random bits of information, uh, filing away the things that are important, sort of discarding the things that are not important. Events occurring while we're awake are only stored in temporary memory. In dreams, we throw away irrelevant material and file useful information into permanent storage. We know that when you go to sleep at night, especially during REM sleep or dreaming sleep, that's when your memories are consolidated. That's when you learn more things. In fact, it's very clear that if you study and then sleep, you're going to do better on the test the next day. As opposed to what most people do is, let's stay awake cramming and take the test. That sleep is critical for memory and learning. But the sorting process can be strange. With no logic to impose order, thoughts can collide, unleashing creativity, generating fresh ideas. This may explain how some great minds work. Einstein's dream of traveling on a sled at the speed of light influenced his theory of relativity. Nobel Prize winner Niels Bohr revolutionized physics when a dream of horses offered a clue to atomic structure. And artist Salvador Dali described his surreal work as hand-painted dream photographs. Dreaming pays off, even for space technologists. While dreaming, NASA designer Bruce Dahmer cracked a problem that had bugged him for months how to build a permanent moon base. There were all these elements. How do you shield astronauts from radiation? How do you have them use local resources, maybe get oxygen out of the lunar surface material? And so I basically absorbed all this stuff for months. And then one night, I consciously said, OK, everything's in there. Go for it. You know, boot up the dream processor and give, give me something. <laughs> 